Hey, what's going on guys? Jag and Tech here, and it is finally time. It's finally time for another Android customization video. Now, I know a lot of you have been asking for this, and I want to apologize if it came a bit late. I believe the last time I did this was around July 2020, so this is definitely due for an update. So if you watch my old videos, some things may appear familiar to you guys, but of course, I will show everything that is new here. But if you're new to the channel, welcome, and I hope you stay till the end. It's gonna be fun. So here's the ultimate Samsung customization. Let's get on with it. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do, of course, is unlock your phone. So go ahead and unlock it. And once you're in, you're gonna look for the Galaxy Store. So go through all your apps right now and look for the Galaxy Store that looks like this. And once you're in, you're gonna wanna search for Good Lock. So that's G-O-O-D space L-O-C-K, Good Lock. So it should appear at the top result, but if not, you're gonna look for an icon that looks like this. So feel free to pause the video and take some time to install it and go back. All right, so once you're done installing it, go ahead and open the app and you'll be given a lot of modules here that you will have to download one by one. So we have stuff like Lockstar, Quickstar, Tax Changer, a lot of cool stuff. So go ahead and download that. So it should have this icon right here if it's not downloaded. And once you're downloading it, it should have this little basket icon right here. So again, feel free to pause the video and let us go back to once you're done. All right, hopefully everything is done downloading and ready to go. So let's start with the tutorial. All right, first we're gonna start with Lockstar. But first, what is this all about? This module is everything lock screen. With this, you'll be able to change the position of your clock, your notification icons, and your widgets. You'll also be given a bigger selection of clock styles and wallpapers to make it a very personalized lock screen. And here's how to do it. All right, so to turn this on, let's just toggle the switch right here and go straight to edit portrait lock screen. All right, so once you're in, you can already drag and drop your time as well as your notification icons to anywhere you want. All right, so let's say I'm gonna put it here in the center. That should be ready to go. All right, next is your wallpaper. So as you can see, we have a bunch of options here that we can choose from, but we can always choose from our gallery if ever you wanna use a picture from there as our wallpaper. But for now, I'm just gonna use this one and go ahead to clock. All right, so in clock, we have tons of options here for our clock faces. So just tap away and see which one appeals to you the most or your personality. All right, so let's say I'm gonna choose this one because it looks pretty cool. Just adjust it and there we go. All right, last, go to items. And here we can choose if you wanna display the widget or not. We have lock icon, the status bar, and the type of notifications that we want to display. And when you're done, go ahead and save, turn off the screen, and there we have it. We have a new lock screen. Okay, so hopefully you guys enjoyed Lockstar and all its cool stuff and capabilities, but now it's time to move over to Quickstar. So Quickstar is the second tab down here, I'm just gonna tap on it, and of course we're gonna turn it on as well. So what this does is completely change the appearance or layout of your status bar over here. And in order to do that, let's go first to visibility of indicator icons. So once you're in here, go down to system icon, and as you can see, I have a lot that are turned on and some that are turned off. This is because these are the icons that will appear in my status bar, and these are the ones that will not appear whatsoever in my status bar. An example of this is my volume icon, Wi-Fi, and airplane mode icon. So if I turn them all off at the same time, they will completely disappear from my status bar. And if I turn them back on again, they will completely reappear in my status bar, just like that. Very easy and very simple. Next, we have clock settings. The first thing you're gonna notice here is show AM or PM. So if you turn this on, you will simply get the AM or PM icon. If you turn it off, it will disappear. Next is position and visibility. So as you can see, my clock is positioned at the left, but let's say I wanna move it all the way to the right. So I'm gonna tap on right, and let's say I wanna completely hide it from the status bar, just tap on hide, just like that. But for now, I'm gonna keep it on the left. And there we go. All right, third is show notifications by last update. So if you go in here and turn it on, you'll finally get your notifications arranged in chronological order and not based on the priority of the app. So it is very useful. Next, we have show quick button grid. So you can turn that on, drag down, and go to the three dot menu here and tap on button grid. You'll finally be able to adjust the grid of your quick settings over here. So you have three by three, we have three by four, and a five by three. All right, so that's pretty useful. And last but not the least, we have open quick panel directly. So if you go in here and turn it on, you'll be able to swipe left or right on the status bar to go to your notifications and swipe left to your quick settings. 
but for me this is not as useful as it is because the sensitivity is kind of off so i prefer to just keep this off as it is all right and that is quickstar for test changer unfortunately as of now has not been updated for good luck 2021 so this is quite of a bummer especially since it is the most popular module out there for good luck but what you might not know is it's actually just tucked in somewhere else and i'll get to that in a second Last year, Navstar was exclusive for the navigation buttons only, but in 2021, we finally get settings for the swipe gestures on One UI as well. And I gotta say, this is very exciting for users who prefer the gestures. So here's how to get it set up. Okay, so go ahead and tap on Navstar and turn it on. So currently, I'm using the swipe gestures, but I'm gonna show you guys all these options in just a minute. First, I'm gonna show you guys what the navigation bar can do. First step is go out and turn on your navigation bar. There we go, and now we can turn it on. So as you can see here, I've created my own navigation bar with a burger icon, crown, and sun. And I've already mapped all the controls to these respective icons, just like that. And you can also create your own by tapping on new configuration. So just tap on that, and now choose the background color of your navigation bar. So it's a purple, go to button layout, and if you want towards the right, we have that. If you want towards the left, we have that. And you can also choose to add another button, there we go. So here are all the controls that you can choose from and just choose whichever feels useful to you. So let's say screen off, there we go, and tap on icons. So you can also choose the transparency level over here, the adaptive icon colors, we can turn that on or off, and you can also choose the actual icons for those controls. So let's say cake for power, for recents, let's say this asterisk, for home, let's say the smiley face, and there we have it. Okay, so tap on save, go to all the way to the bottom, tap on it, and now you have your whole new navigation bar, just like that. Pretty cool. All right, now it's time for swipe gestures. Now before we start, please take note that this will only work if you have gesture hints turned on. So if not, go ahead to settings, go to navigation bar, and make sure gesture hints is turned on. Because if not, then you won't be able to maximize the settings of good luck. So once you're done, go ahead back to good luck, and now we can begin. All right, first we have transparent hint. So you guys know how this bar takes up so much screen real estate in our apps, just like here on YouTube? Well, if we turn that on, then it will completely shrink or make that whole bar disappear and give us more screen real estate. So if you go back here to YouTube, as you can see, it has now disappeared and gave us more screen real estate. And that is the beauty of transparent hint. All right, next is back gesture sensitivity. Now, if you've been using gestures for a while, you already know how to go back and forth using the side swipes. But here you can bump up the sensitivity of those swipes if you want to. Okay, next is gesture handle. So with a slider down here, we can make it very small and we can also make it very wide. So for me, I just keep it in the middle down here and we can also change the color, tapping on here. We can make it red, we can make it blue, purple, green, yellow, anything we want. But if you don't want those settings, just reset it and it'll go back to normal. And that is Navstar. Now, Clockface is pretty much self-explanatory for longtime Samsung users. But again, if you're new here, if you're new to Samsung, Clockface takes it to a whole other level. In here, you're able to create your own clock faces from scratch with different shapes, colors, and layouts. And the process is pretty simple. All right, so after tapping on Clockface, you'll be given two options. One is always on display and the other is lock screen. So go ahead and choose whichever you want. Go to face on the left side. And now you can see all the clock faces that we dealt with in Lockstar. So some of these can be fully customized while the others cannot be customized. So let's say I want to customize this one. Just tap on it, tap the purple icon, and now I can change the GIF or image that is being displayed. And let's say I want to remove it. So tap on this trash can icon right here. And now I can replace it with anything that I want. So tap on this plus icon. I can put an analog clock date, text, or image. So let's say I'm gonna choose an image. And now I can choose whichever is being displayed here. Pretty cool. I can also scale it up like that. Let's say I wanna choose my own image from a gallery. Tap on gallery here. Go to my logo, let's say. And I can change the scale of my logo. Make it a little bit smaller, there we go. Change the layout of the time. And I can also put a date. There we go. Put a date on the bottom right here. And now I can download it by tapping on this blue icon right here. So download it, tap on it right here, blue check mark. And now I have a whole new clock face. There we go. 
Okay, now I'm going to teach you guys how to create your own clock face from scratch. So from here, just tap on the plus icon, and now we can start creating. So first off, we have the clock hands. So here we can change the shape and color of our clock hands. There we go. And now we can change the pin size and shape and color as well. And down here, we can change the index. So feel free to take your time here and just choose whichever you want. And down here, we can change the background to circle or square. So for me, just choose this one and that should be good. And now I want to put a date. So tap on plus, put a date on it. Choose the layout of your date, put it down here. And now I'm going to put an image. So tap on plus down here, tap on image and just choose any one that appears here. Tap on download, tap on it, blue check mark. And now we have a whole new clock face. Multistar is, I would say, for the hardcore power users, the ones who take multitasking very seriously. With this, you can easily create pop-up windows and enhance your split-screen experience. Okay, so once you're in Multistar, you'll be seeing a few options over here, and I'll show you each and every one that can affect your usage. So first of all is pop-up view action. So if you turn this on, you basically get an easier way now to open up a pop-up window by swiping down in the corner of your phone. And you can also readjust the window to however you want. Okay. And the slider down here actually dictates the sensitivity of your swipe. So if you crank it all the way up here, you can swipe down from just here and now you can detect the swipe. And that is pop-up view action. Next is enable multi-window to all apps. So basically what this does is force all your apps to run a pop-up view or split screen view since not all apps are capable of this feature. So if you want to turn that on, you will have to restart your phone. And that's that. Next is pop-up view screen zoom. So basically if you turn this on, you'll be able to get a non-magnified version of your pop-up window. As opposed to being turned off, you will get the magnified version of the same pop-up window, as you can see here. And that is all this feature can do. And last but not the least, we have immersive mode. And what this does is completely hide the status bar from your split screen view. So now that it's turned off, let's see what it will look like. So go to split screen view. As you can see, we have the status bar displayed on the top. But if we turn immersive mode on and go back to split screen view, there we go. We don't have the status bar anymore displayed and we have a more immersive and full display of your split screen. And that is pretty cool if you ask me. And that is Multistar. Okay, now this is where things get really good. And what I mean by this is you get smaller folders in the app drawer, bigger app grids, and spoiler alert, this is where you can find Task Changer. Welcome to Homa. All right, guys, I won't keep you waiting. So let's go first to Task Changer down here. All right, so of course, turn it on. There we go. And for now, we can only choose from three options compared to last time's, I think, seven or eight. So here we have List, Grid, which is my personal favorite, and Stack. So go ahead and choose which one you want and go back down here. All right, so first is App Label. So if you turn this off, this will basically hide your label down here and just display the icon of your app. And if you turn it on, then of course it will show the label over here. Next is hide search bar. So if you keep that off, the search bar will appear over here. But if you turn it on, then it will just be a clean slate. There we go. All right, next is pretty cool. Now switch to previous apps with gestures. Now I want you to turn this on right now because this is what you can do. So turn it on and now you can swipe from all your apps using the gestures below. And it, this is really useful. It's one of the best features in Good Lock. So make sure to turn that on. All right, next is allow bottom gestures in full screen mode. So basically, if you turn this on, you will be able to use the gestures in full screen apps, like when you're watching movies or playing games. All right, so for me, just turn this off since it's very sensitive. And at the bottom, you can now change the sensitivity setting of the bottom gesture to turn it on. And you can now use this slider to change the sensitivity. But for me, I just turned that off. And that is the new task changer for 2021. Jumping into the main home up section, we have home screen. So just tap on it. And first we have grid. So we have home screen grid and app screen grid. So here you can have a minimum of four by four up to a maximum of seven by seven. After that, just tap apply. And now you can have a whole new screen grid in your home screen. And next is app screen. So again, instead of the minimum of four by four, you can bump it up all the way to seven by seven, tap apply, and you have the same thing for your app screen. And the cool thing about this is I can load all my apps in just one page if possible. Next up, we have favorites max count. So this is basically our dock. So as you can see here, I'm rocking five. 
but I can bump it up all the way to nine. Just tap on apply again and drag all my apps towards the dock and I can load it up up to nine apps on the dock. So that's pretty cool. Okay, next is loop pages. So basically what this does is give you an infinite scroll or loop of your home screen as well as your app screen. But for the home screen, this will not work if you have the side panel here turned on. So make sure it's turned off so you can maximize the setting of this feature. There we go. We also have background blur control. So just turn it on and tap here. And as you can see, we can already adjust the blur rate using this slider over here. And this will only be applicable to the app screen once you swipe up. And last but not the least, we have hide app icon label. So if you turn it on, go to your home screen, you'll basically have no name on any of your apps on the home screen. So that's pretty cool if you need it. Okay, moving on, we have folder. So just tap on it. And first we have pop-up folder. And next we have folder grid down here. So folder grid basically makes you change the layout of your folder icon and screen. So let's say I'm gonna change my folder icon to four by four and my folder screen to five by five. Just tap on apply, go to my folder. So as you can see here, it's displayed four by four and I open it, it's a five by five layout. And that is folder grid. But let's say you wanna make your folders very small. So just turn this on over here, tap on pop-up folder, background color, choose whichever background color you want, your background transparency, and the corners, as well as your text color. All right, once you're done, go back to your folder. And as you can see here, my folder is already very small and I can just scroll through the apps over here. And that is great for one-handed usage. And that is the folder tab. Okay, last is share manager. So go ahead and tap on it. And now we can fully customize the layout of our share menu. An example of this is when you go to photos, you tap on share, you'd be getting a loaded or full list of apps that you can share to. But with Share Manager, you can just trim that down to your favorite apps. So go and click on Select Share Applications, and now we can choose the apps that we frequently share to. So let's say Facebook. There we go. We can share to our news feed over there. We can go to Gmail, Add, Lightroom, let's say Instagram, the chat and our stories, Add. And now we may go back to Photos, tap on Share. My favorite apps will now be loaded in the Share menu. And there we go. And for the other options, you can just toggle on and off if you want to say a summary of what you're sending or if you want nearby sharing to be your default. And you can even add a favorite direct share. So just tap on it, just tap on any name, and they will immediately load up in the top of your share menu. And that is Share Manager. Let's move over to Notistar. If you're the kind of user who always wants proof of being notified or if you want to store your notifications so you won't get lost, Notistar does exactly what you want it to do. So again, Notistar is pretty basic, so just tap on it, turn it on, and once you go back to your lock screen, you'll now have a drawer for your notifications. But inside, you can also customize Notistar. First off, we have application list. So by tapping on this, you'll now be able to choose the applications that you want the notifications of to be displayed in Notistar. So you can just turn it on and off. There you go. But if you want all of your apps, just turn it on like that. You can also choose how long your notifications will be stored by tapping on notification storage period. So from here, you can choose a week, a month, half a year to even a full year. But if you don't want any of that, you can choose no limit. So literally all your notifications will be stored forever. And last but not the least, we have icon settings on lock screen. So tap on it and now you can choose the color of your start icon. So you can make it red, orange, yellow, green or anything you want. You can also choose the transparency over here using the slider and tap on save. And once you go back to your lock screen, you now have a orange start icon. And there are all your notifications. Keys Cafe is one of the newest modules in GoodLock and is actually one of the most fun to mess with. This is where you can change the behavior, layout, color, and sound of your keyboard. And you can also play some typing games in the app if you want. Okay, so Keys Cafe can be found in the family menu down here. So make sure you're there and go ahead and tap on it. And when you get this prompt, you will have to switch back to the Samsung keyboard since this does not work on any third-party keyboards. So go ahead and switch back, and there we go. All right, first you're gonna wanna turn these on and go to make your own keyboard. So as you can see, we have English and Symbol. So first step is go tap plus, change the layout of your keyboard, and tap on edit. So as you can see, we have a lot of symbols here, a lot of signs, emojis, and controls. That may be a bit confusing, but I'm gonna show you guys how this works. So here at the bottom, I have a keyboard, and I can change almost everything about this keyboard. So let's say I wanna change number one to an emoji. 
All right, so I'm gonna change it with this one right here. I can also change the width of the key as well as the height. There we go. And I can also change zero to this emoji, let's say. I can also change the height, the width to however I want. There we go. And we can also change the shortcuts of the letters. So let's say letter T and change the shortcuts over here at top. Let's say this one and this emoji and this emoji. There we go. All right, and I can also change the controls. So let's say I wanna change this globe icon right here to open up my emojis. So I'm gonna tap on it, go to my controls over here and tap on the smiley face and there we go. So once we're done, go ahead and tap check, give it a name, ASD let's say, and we're done. So now let's head on over to messages and try out the new keyboard. So as you can see, we now have the new keys in the corners, the new shortcuts for letter T up here, as well as opening my emojis from this bottom left corner over here. And that's pretty cool. So all this tricks and cool stuff can be found in the simple setup up here. And that is how you make your own keyboard. All right, next is style your own keyboard. So go ahead and tap on it. And now we can change the theme of our keyboard. So as you can see here, we have a bunch of presets that we can choose from. So go ahead and tap on anything that you like. Let's say this one, tap on apply, and it will create its own theme. And after that, we now have a whole new keyboard theme just like that. There we go. But now let's try to create our own. So go ahead and tap on plus, and now we can choose from the options down here. But we can always choose to change the color to whatever we want. So let's say bump up the saturation, make it go blue, done. There we go. We can now choose from these presets that are provided. We can also change the key style or shape with this bottom row down here. So now we're done for light mode. We can now switch back to dark mode. So here are the presets for dark mode. And again, change the color. Let's say the same color right there, tap done. And now we get these. So once you're done with everything, go ahead and tap download up here. Give it a name, let's say ASD as well. Tap okay, and it will install. So go ahead and select your custom keyboard and we now have a whole new keyboard just like that. So once you're done creating and styling your own keyboard, you can now test it out and have fun by playing these keyboard games right here. So as you can see, we have sentence practice where of course you'll be typing sentences and word rain where you'll be typing words as fast as you can. So go ahead and test it out. It's going to be pretty fun. All right, for this next one, please bear with me for I will try to explain this the easiest way I can. So hopefully you guys can follow. This is Wonderland where you can take your current wallpaper and make it come to life. That's right, you can make moving wallpapers using full animations straight out of this app, and it's pretty wild. So, here's how to make your own. All right, let's head into Wonderland. So just tap start, and now we have a bunch of options here that we can choose, edit, or draw inspiration from. So let's say this game one right here, as you can see we have a lot of movement, and I can set it up as my wallpaper right away, or even edit the whole thing, just like that. Everything from the settings, color and movement of the layer all the way to adding my own image text or effects but now let's try to create our own so just tap on you right here and now we're going to choose whether we want an image or color so for me i'm just going to go for an image in my gallery just like that and now change the crop there we go next i'm going to put in the animation so just tap here and choose particle effect so as you can see here we have a lot of images and shapes that we can choose from but for now i'm just going to go for the donut and now choose the movement style. So we have flying snowflakes, scattered raindrops, rising bubbles, and more. But for now, I'm just gonna go for the raindrops and now choose the playing type. So just go for autoplay if you want, and there you go. So from here, you can already see the effect by tapping on preview. And as you can see, it's already raining donuts. And I can change everything about the animation from duration right here, the size of the donuts, make it bigger or small, the rotation of the donuts, as well as the amount of donuts being shown. And as you can see here, there are a lot of settings to be done with, and you're gonna have to take your time if you really want to maximize this setting. But if you're done, go ahead and save, give it a name, let's say donut, save it, and now we can set it as a wallpaper. So set as a wallpaper, choose whether you want lock screen or home screen, and there we go. We now have raining donuts in our lock screen. Next, we have theme park. Now, this is where you can create your own theme for the system UI. You can make it match your current wallpaper or you can make it the complete opposite, anything you want. You'll be surprised how far customization in here goes. So Theme Park has three options, one for the system apps, one for the keyboard, and another for the quick panel. But first let us create one for the system apps. So go ahead and create new, 
and just choose whether you want your current wallpaper or another gallery photo. And after that, tap on next, and now you're in theme park. So as you can see, blue is the dominant color for all my wallpapers. So the app will try to make a theme that will match all those shades of blue. But you can also change the color palette just like this. Basically the same thing we did in Keys Cafe a while ago. And we can also change the color completely to whatever we want. So let's say red. There we go. Change it to red theme. And now we have blue and red. And the same thing goes if you switch to dark mode, we can also change the shade of that theme. So let's say we want to go for the same red a while ago. There we go. And now we have a black and red theme. One more thing you can customize are the UI elements. So just tap on here and you can change almost everything about these elements. So let's say this volume icon right here, I want to change it to blue. So just tap on this dot right here, bring up the saturation, make it blue right here, tap on OK. And now all my icons up here are color blue. And the same thing goes for all these other elements. All right, so go back. And once you're done with all of that, go ahead and tap download, give it a name, let's say red, okay. And once it's done, go ahead and check your system apps. And now we have a red theme for both light mode and dark mode, just like that. Pretty cool. Okay, for keyboard, it's basically just Keys Cafe, but what you can do here is tap on edit and change the entire color scheme of the keyboard. Let's say you wanna make it all red letters. So I'll tap on here, make it red, tap okay and now we have red letters all around i can also change the background image to whatever i want let's say this one right here and now we have this keyboard ready to go and of course when you're done tap on download give it a name let's say red tap okay and now it's ready to be used just like that and last but not the least quick panel so again tap on create new and the same thing goes we can switch it from light mode to dark mode just like this we can also change the ui element color to whatever we want all right, and now we can change the color palette to whatever you want as well. And once you're done, go ahead and download it, give it a name, all right, tap OK, and install it. And once it's done, tap on it and tap Apply, and now you have a whole new quick panel just like that. Next is One Hand Operation Plus. Now this is probably the best feature out of all. You'll be able to do any command with just a swipe of your finger. And this can make your entire experience a whole lot easier. Okay, so go into One Hand Operation Plus and turn it on. So as you can see, we have left handle and right handle. So I'm gonna want you guys to pay attention to these two bars right here on each side. So first go to left handle, and now you have the different directions with different commands. So if we go straight right, it goes back. If I go diagonal up, it goes to my recents. And if I go diagonal down, it goes to my quick tools. And I can pretty much change this to anything I want. Let's say diagonal up, I'm gonna change it to take a screenshot. Here we go. Swipe up, and now it takes a screenshot. And for quick tools, I can even add or delete controls. So in the menu, go all the way to the bottom, choose quick tools, and tap this gear icon right here. And as you can see, I can already rearrange all the controls and icons, and even delete some out of the list. And I can also add them back just using this menu right here night mode, add mobile data, and now we're ready to go. As you can see, I can already tap these icons right here and toggle them just like that. Okay, next we have long swipe. So if we turn this on, it's basically the same thing, but now we have to do a much longer swipe to get to the second control. So basically, you now have two controls for the same direction. First, we have back, and the second, we have quick tools, just like that. Okay, for the right handle, you can pretty much do the exact same thing for your short swipe and your long swipe and you can even use the exact same controls as your left handle right here, and that's that. Next we have animation, so if you turn this on, you'll now have an arrow that appears every time you do an action on your gesture handle, and you can also choose the animation type over here, as well as the color of that animation. There we go, but for me, I just choose to turn this off. We also have show notifications if you want to tap to hide your handles outside, you also have fit to keyboard, hide on lock screen, and hide in quick panel. But later on, I'm going to show you guys a trick on how to make your bars invisible throughout the whole experience. Okay, next is gesture settings. So go in here and now you have options for short swipe and long swipe. And the best thing about this feature is quick action. So since this turned on, we can just simply flick to get to our controls just like that. As opposed to having it turned off, we're going to have to release our finger first before the control even appears. So I suggest to just keep this on for quicker access. All right, next we have these sliders down here. And what this does is change the overall size of the bars. So we have the width over here, the overall height, and the position of the bars itself. 
and here's how to make them invisible. So go to handle color and bring down the opacity all the way to 0% regardless of what color you're in. Alright, so bring it down to 0%, press done, and now you have invisible bars. And last but not the least, you can also customize the vibration intensity using this slider down here. And that is One Hand Operation Plus. And last but not the least is Sound Assistant. Again, this is for the power users and at some point for audiophiles too, because here you'll be able to take full control of your phone's audio. All right, so go to Sound Assistant and first you have Volume Panel Theme. So go ahead and turn that on and tap on it. So this is where you can change the appearance and layout of your volume panel. So tap here on Layout, and if you tap on Right, then of course it will be shown on the right side just like this. And if you tap on Left, then of course it will be transferred over to the left side just like this. And you can also change the color to whatever you want. So we have Gray, Purple, Red, Pink, Yellow, anything you want. And once you're done, go back. And now let's move on. Okay, next is control media volume. So if you turn this off, you will only be able to control your ringtone volume using the slider over here, as well as your side buttons. As opposed to having it turned on, you will have full control of your media and music with the slider, as well as your buttons over here. You can also set the maximum volume for each app over here, as well as mute everything at once with media matter mode. And next is change step volume. So this is a slider to adjust the rate at which the volume is changed. So let's say it's bump it up to 10. So now if I go lower, it will go down by tens, and if I go higher, it will go up by tens. And that is change step volume. Next is custom vibration. So this is where you can create your own vibration pattern using these pads down here. And as you can see, this is something I cannot demonstrate, so you're gonna have to try this out on your own. We also have options for multi-sound, so this is where you can choose an app to let it play its sound at the same time as other apps. So Spotify is a good choice for that. We also have separate app sound, wherein if you're connected to a Bluetooth device, it will only register sound from your chosen app or applications. We also have Bluetooth metronome where you can reduce latency when watching videos using Bluetooth devices. And last but not the least, we have sound quality and effects. And this is where you can customize your equalizer to however you want, as well as advanced settings here. And this is where you can turn on mono audio, you can control music with your volume keys, as well as change your sound balance of your audio. And that is Sound Assistant. All right, that concludes the ultimate Samsung customization. And congratulations for making it till the end. I hope it was all worth it. And if ever you guys have any questions or you think I missed out on something, just drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to get to each and every one of you. Also, this will not be available to all regions, so you may have to download an ABK to get this running. But if you happen to have a SIM card from a region where good luck is available, just stick it in your phone and you'll be able to download it from there because that is exactly what I did. Anyway, hope you guys liked the video and feel free to share this with your friends and family who want to learn more about what their Samsung device can do. And I'll see you guys in the next one.